Hey, it's Hawking with Top Don. Today we're going to do a walkthrough video on the Top Don Ultra Diag. But before we get started in the on tool portion of our demonstration, we're going to show you a little bit more on the hardware. This tablet is a little bit different than some of our other units, so we just want to explain some of the ports on the tool. So as we turn the tool here, we have a USB-C port, we have a full-size HDMI port, we have a DC power jack, which we do provide the adapter for. We also have a full-size uh, USB-A, I believe is what these are, uh, but this one is the port you want to use if you are going to cable to the VCI or dongle. And then we also have a full-size Ethernet port. On top, we also have two buttons here. We have a camera button over here that by default is mapped to take a screenshot if you long press on it. And then we also have the power button over here. When we turn the tablet around, we have a kickstand here, which is used for holding the tool up. And then we also have the dongle, which magnetically attaches to the body of the tool. So now that we've walked you through all of the physical hardware, let's go ahead and get started on the car. All right, so now we're on the vehicle and we're gonna walk you through all the menus on the tool so you can get familiar and comfortable with everything. So we're gonna start on the very bottom of the screen here. We have a down, or excuse me, a back arrow right here that allows us to go back from any screen we're on. We have a home button, which will take us back to the main screen. We have this button right here, which if we hit takes us back to our Android menu. We'll go ahead and hit our home button, takes us right back into the app. We also have our close app where we can swipe the program away to close it if we need to. And then we also have our screenshot button. So if we hit that down on the bottom, we can screenshot. We can also use the hard keyed button in the top right of the tool if we want to do a screenshot. So multiple options on screenshots. So now we're gonna do kind of like we do in all our other videos, we're gonna kind of work backwards. So we're gonna go into the user info first, and this is where you're gonna find a variety of things. Uh, your VCI management is gonna show you if you need to check on the serial number of your dongle. Uh, this one here is the serial number of the dongle, and of course, that is etched on the dongle itself, so you can always double check that if you're not sure. We also have firmware update, which is used for updating both the T-darts as well as the dongle itself, as you can see right here. And then we also have the ability to uninstall diagnostic software. So if there's software that you are not using, you can delete that from the tool in order to free up some space. Now, it's also important to remember that this tool has a micro SD card slot if you want to expand the storage. So we're not going to show you that on the video here, but it is on the side of the tool. Now in this menu, we also have user info, which we can enter in a variety of information, specifically uh, to keep track of our tool and uh, the information that will be on the reports. We also have customer feedback where we can submit information if there are errors or uh, different things we would like to see changed with the tool, we can use the customer feedback button. Shop info is if you're working at a professional shop and you wanna add your shop information to the reports and the tool, you can enter that in here. Settings allows you to go into the menu where you can change your language, change your units of measurement, uh, clear the cache if you wanna free up some space in the cache or if there's any glitches you wanna try to resolve, that can be an easy thing to do. And then the about, and in the about menu, there is also a place to check for updates. We'll go back here. Then we also have a system update button and that is another spot you wanna check for updates periodically. So again, in the settings, we want to go to the about and check for updates, and we also want to check the system update for tool updates. Both of those places have potential updates that can be deployed, so you always want to check those regularly to make sure you have the latest version of the app. So we'll go back to our main screen here, and you can see we have a few different other menus we're going to walk through. Going backwards, we have the immobilizer menu, and the immobilizer menu is primarily designed for key work. So we're not gonna do any key work in this particular video, but you can download all the software for related immobilizer functions uh, in this particular menu. Uh, this will be where you'll access them. Then we'll go back to our folder here. The folder is where we can see all of our reports and recorded data. So reports here and recorded data here. So if we hit reports, you can see here's a bunch of our system reports that we've conducted on various vehicles. And we can open any of those we want to on demand. Over here, we've got our battery tester, which we're not going to show you here today. Uh, but the battery tester works with the BT Mobile Pro S. 
So if you purchase the BT Mobile Pro S and you would like to do integrated starting, charging, and battery testing and create PDF reports to email out, you can use the app right there as a shortcut. Then we've got our update button right here, which allows us to download a variety of updates uh, for both the diagnostic side of the tool as well as the immobilizer side of the tool and also the T-Darts. Now, if we hit the select button, we can batch download as many as we would like to. So if we hit select, whoops, fat finger, we're gonna go ahead and choose whichever we would like to update. So let's say we're gonna update Audi and we're gonna update Buick. We can select those and then hit update. And of course, make sure, you're sure that you are connected to strong Wi-Fi. You can also plug it into hardline ethernet using the ethernet port up on top and that will speed up your updates. So that is a nice benefit. You can update your tool quite a bit faster if you do have ethernet. So up in the top right here, we have our library. And in the library, we have a number of different links. We've got a DTC repair guide with some basic hints on a variety of fault codes. We have a TSB section that you can search for TSBs on your vehicle, uh, DLC location, which will help you locate the DLC on your vehicle. Uh, warning light library, which gives you a kind of an overall view of a variety of warning lights that may commonly come on on a vehicle and gives you the description of what those are. And then vehicle coverage lookup, which of course is for checking to see what the tool covers with regards to various functions. Next, we've got our diagnostics section. We're going to skip that and save that for last. We're going to show you the maintenance menu. The maintenance menu currently contains these services. Uh, that menu will likely expand in the future, but these are basically shortcuts to perform common reset and relearn procedures on a variety of vehicles. So if you want to quickly get to one of these procedures on a given vehicle, the maintenance menu is your fastest way to get there. Now we'll go into the diagnostics menu. So when we hit the diagnostics menu, we can search vehicle makes up at the top. We can go to the VIN section and auto VIN the vehicle or we can select by region of vehicle where it's manufactured and sold to look for the vehicle. We also see in the top right corner our VCI status. That VCI status can be connected via Bluetooth or we can use a USB cable. Now remember we wanna use the flat, wide, rectangular shaped USB port on the tool to USB-C in order to connect the dongle. That is the preferred method. We can also enter in our VIN here, but we're gonna do auto VIN. And the auto VIN will pull the VIN from the vehicle as long as the key is on and the battery power is sufficient. It should be able to retrieve the VIN and automatically identify the vehicle. Now you do need to make sure you are connected to internet during this. And you do always want to check and make sure that the VIN that it pulls matches the VIN on the vehicle door plate. If it does not, you may want to check to see if the vehicle perhaps has had a used module installed in it uh, from some other source that does have a different VIN stored in it, as of course that is always a possibility. We're gonna hit confirm, and we're gonna just look and make sure this makes sense. 2013 Dodge Journey, that lines up with the vehicle we are in. So we're gonna hit okay. And now we have a couple of different options here. So we got our vehicle profile, which gives us the same screen we get right after the auto ID. We'll hit our back button here. Hot functions takes us to a variety of various quick service functions that we might need to perform on this given vehicle. This menu is typically going to be vehicle specific, so you will not always have the exact same options here depending on the vehicle. Some will have more, some will have less. But we're gonna hit auto scan. Once we get into auto scan, we can now auto scan the vehicle and scan all modules specifically to see if there are fault codes. Now it's important to remember during the auto scan that the speed of the auto scan is somewhat impacted by the speed of the vehicle network. Older vehicles have slower networks, so the DTC scan will typically take longer. Newer vehicles typically have faster data networks, which means the scan will typically take less time. So we'll let it go ahead and finish scanning here and it looks like it's going pretty fast. And we do have a number of fault codes. So we'll be able to generate a report with all those fault codes once it's all done scanning. So now we have a couple options down on the bottom. We have our clear DTCs where we can just clear all the faults right away. We can hit it report. And then we also have our show all button, 
which shows additional modules that could be equipped on this vehicle, but the tool has not been able to communicate with them or detect them on the network. So we're gonna hit report. And now you simply wanna verify all the fields that you wish to fill out. So you can say miles or kilometers and type in your mileage or kilometers. We're just gonna put 100 because we're not worried about that right now. You can see we can put in some additional information like our engine displacement, the submodel, uh, the license plate number, and of course, if we're working in a professional shop environment, perhaps the customer and the ticket number for this particular work order. We also have some fields down at the bottom where we can enter in notes about the vehicle. Uh, if we wanted to put in like a customer concern, just a little short note or something like that. And we can also embed up to four images. The tool does actually have a, a full camera on the back with a flash. So if we wanna take some pictures and embed them into the report, we can certainly do that. And then once we do that, we can hit confirm and we will get our nice uh, professional looking report. Now the report has the QR code in the top right, so you can pull this off of the tool very quickly if you wanna get it on your phone or your tablet. When we scroll down, it tells you how many systems were communicated with and scanned and how many of them had fault codes. It'll give you the summary here showing which systems have faults. And then as we scroll further, it'll give us the specific fault codes that have been logged in the vehicle. It also shows us the status, whether those fault codes are current or history or pending. So you can see we do have a number of codes. We're gonna save the report. And now we can also share. So if we wanna email it as a PDF or any other of these formats listed, we can do that. And we're gonna send the email. And of course you can change the title if you want, but that report has now been emailed. So now that we've done our report, we have the option to go into any of the modules that are listed that we have communicated with and we can look at live data. We can also do a variety of other functions depending on the specific vehicle and specific module. So we're gonna look at the PCM just for demonstration purposes today. So you can see here's the menus we have on the PCM on this vehicle. We have some various different options. Uh, we have misfire data, special functions menu, system check function, uh, configuration, which is usually something we would need if a new module or used module has been installed, when of course a used module is compatible, which can be very variable. We have active test, which is bi-directional controls. Again, some modules will have this and some will not. We have our data stream, and then of course we have our DTCs where we can read them and clear them. We also have ECU info, which we can use to verify specific details about the control unit that we are talking to with the scan tool. So this may provide a variety of various information that could be useful to us depending on what problem we are trying to troubleshoot. But for today, we're just gonna show you the data stream as this is a particular function that gets used pretty often. And we're gonna show you the graphing feature of the tool. Now, if you are going to graph any data on the tool, strongly recommend that you use the USB cable from the dongle to the tool. This will increase graphing speed resolution and improve how smooth the graphs are. Now today we're just gonna show you the Bluetooth graphing, which is still very fast and effective. So with the ultra diag, we can graph up to six different data pits. So since the vehicle's not running, we're gonna to try to pick some stuff here that is not going to move around a whole lot. We'll just do six random data pits here. And you see six. So in the graphing on the bottom right here, you can see we can combine up to four into one synchronous graph, or we can graph six individual data pids. So here's six individual data pids. And if we want to graph four integrated, we can simply remove two here and hit combine. And now we can graph up to four at a time simultaneously. You can also record these through the record button on the top, or excuse me, the bottom right. We can also drag from the top of the screen down. And on this here, we have a screen record button right here that will video record everything that's happening on the screen. That can be extremely convenient if you would prefer to see that for data review, as opposed to the record we have down, or excuse me, record button on the bottom right there. My preference is to use the screen record button from dragging from the top of the screen down, as it also allows you to turn the microphone on and then you can narrate the video. 
So if you're on a test drive by yourself, for instance, and you want to record data and be able to essentially notify the tool when you experience a symptom so that you can correlate that with the data that's displayed on the screen, you can easily do this using the screen record function with microphone up here in this menu. Now, we can also generate a report that is momentary capture of data. So if we're in this menu looking at data PIDs and we happen to see something that looks out of whack, we could select that data PID and then we could hit our report button and it will snag or capture that specific data PID and all other data PIDs that we select in a one sequence shot, a moment in time. And it'll write that to a PDF report, which we can use for documentation purposes. So you see here, it gives us all our standard stuff. We'll go ahead and hit continue. And you can see here, now this tried to log all the data PIDs in the entire module, which <laughs> that's, a, that's a hefty task, but the ones that we may care about will certainly be on this list. And in which case we can use this for diagnostic purposes to document anything that we would like uh, for later review. We can also use this for communication uh, with the customer. So now that we've showed you the live data and uh, the variety of other menus we have here, again, we're not going to go through every one of these individually. Uh, we're going to show you just a couple other things here. We do have the little door in the top right corner, which is a shortcut to get us back to the main screen of the tool. Again, our VCI button just verifies the status. And if we do click on that, it will recheck uh, connection for the dongle itself. We have this button here, which is for submitting feedback. If there is an issue with anything on the vehicle, you want to hit this while you're connected to the vehicle, live experiencing the issue. It will log the data directly from the tool, and it will send that information to the engineers so that they can easily address that and get it resolved for the future. You also have this button here. We can toggle on and off. And we're going to go back here. And we're going to go, we can also, I forgot to mention this, we can actually manually ID the vehicle. So if you do get an older vehicle, some older vehicles will not pull the VIN number. So we'll go back out and we'll show you how that's done real quick here because we didn't demonstrate that at the beginning. So if we're in our diagnostics menu here and we want to manually ID a vehicle, either because the VIN doesn't pull or because the vehicle is really old, we could select the regional for the given vehicle. And remember, this is a Dodge. So we're going to hit Dodge. And then we're going to hit manual and we're going to tell it what year. And this was a 2013. And then we're going to be given our list. And this is a journey. And we're going to hit confirm. And then we're going to hit auto scan. And it will work very similar, if not identical, as to if it had pulled the VIN. Again, older vehicles, you may run into a situation where this becomes necessary. But it is nice to have this option, as there is always the possibility that the tool will not be able to identify the vehicle by the VIN. We appreciate you taking the time to watch our video on the Ultra Diag, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them to your local distributor or leave a comment below on the video. As always, we greatly appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again for watching.